This is SSP TV News, brought to you by Samsung Productions and the Hazelton Standard Speaker. The Nuremberg Community Players are trying to get kids excited about the theater. Find out what's going on stage next and how you can win tickets to see the show. Good evening and thank you for joining us at SSP TV News. I'm Ken Cara. To watch us in crystal clear high definition, check out Service Electric Cable Vision Channel 513. And please download the new Samsung Productions app to take all of your favorite local shows with you on the go. Now we must go to our headlines from SSP TV and the Hazelton Standard Speaker. Well, today the State Department of Health announced that 12 permits have been issued for medical marijuana growers and processors in the state. Stand Standard Farms LLC of Whitehaven is one of those who were awarded permits today. John Collins, the director of the Office of Medical Marijuana for the Pennsylvania Department of Health, spoke today about the process. And 57 applications. 177 grower processor applications and 280 dispensary applications. Today we are issuing 12 permits for grower processors, two in each of our medical mar marijuana regions as illustrated in one of these posters. Please also be aware that today signals the start of the next phase of the medical marijuana pe uh, program. The 12 permittees will have six months in which to become operational. Growers, processors may not begin to grow medical marijuana until the department has deemed that they are operational. Also be advised that by the end of this month, we will also issue the permits for the dispensaries. The medical marijuana program became effective on May 17, 2016. It's expected to be fully implemented in 2018. The program will offer medical marijuana to patients who are residents of Pennsylvania and under a physician's care for the treatment of a serious medical condition as defined by Act 16. To see a complete list of approved permits, go to health.pa.gov. In other news, fire damaged two homes in Shenandoah yesterday. The call came in around 4.45 yesterday afternoon. Firefighters from Shenandoah, Monoy City and Frackville responded to the alarm in the 300 block of East Lloyd Street. Six people are temporarily homeless and are being helped by the American Red Cross. A state police fire marshal was expected to be on the scene today to determine the exact cause of Monday's fire. A death is being investigated in Schuylkill County. 60-year-old Gary Marchok, a well-known attorney and the husband of the Schuylkill County treasurer, was discovered yesterday morning in his home in Barnesville. A forensic autopsy, autopsy was expected to be performed tomorrow to determine the exact cause of death. Marchok was the husband of Schuylkill County treasurer Linda Marchok. He operated a law office in Tamaqua. Frackville Borough Council accepted the resignation from a member of the board recently. William Creasy submitted a resignation from the Frackville Borough Council due to personal reasons that was effective June 5th. He was a member of the Frackville Borough Council nearing the end of his four-year term. The Borough Council approved his resignation and has 30 days to appoint someone to fill his position. Well, SSP-TV has been overwhelmed with the tremendous response to our upcoming documentary on the former Angela Park, and due to that overwhelming demand, we have extended the release date to mid-July. You can still order the documentary on DVD. Simply call our studios at 570-459-9813 or go to our website, ssptv.com. The cost of the DVD is $24.99. Also, we are proud to announce that there will be a premiere of the documentary to be shown in our area in the late summer. Stay tuned for more details on that. The Nuremberg community players are a very busy group, but two members of the group stopped by our studios recently to tell our Lisa Sugart what's going on with them, and they brought along a pair of tickets for one lucky viewer. 
One community theater in our area is doing its part to introduce children at a very young age to the arts, and they're here to tell us about their latest production. The Nuremberg Community Players will be presenting The Velveteen Rabbit, and here to tell us all about it today is Suzanne Kroll, the director, and Brenda Sacklebin, who is the assistant director. Suzanne, I guess I'm going to start with you. Um, you're looking to do more and more children's productions, and I guess it's become easier now that you're in a new permanent home for, I guess it's been two years already, so it's not that new of a home. No, we're, we're right now, this time, we're working with Velveteen Rabbit, and we decided to go with a straight play to get more kids involved and make it easier for parents to get there. Uh, musicals take a lot more time, and this is a straight play, and we have about 20 children involved and a few adults. And we are looking to reach out to the community and offer an opportunity for children to be in theater at no cost to the child to participate, which is something that's rare in this area. Most uh, theaters have a fee involved, like a camp, where we just offer it open to anybody who can make it and then teach them the ropes. So it's exciting to that's see how they bloom as they're on the stage. And when you're talking children, I was impressed by the ages. Tell us the ages. Ages 2 to 17. So we have a two-year-old because her older brother's on stage. She was jealous. So now <laughs> she's on stage also, and she's a ham. We're, we're in big trouble. <laughs> but this is good for the kids yeah. to get them out there. They're not afraid of public speaking. Right. Exactly. It, it's offered them that opportunity, and they love dressing up. And um, we'll see what happens on the day of the show. The two-year-old may scare, get scared, but I kind of don't think so because we're going to do some practices with parents sitting in the seats, so hopefully that will help them get used to uh, an audience in front of them. Oh, I think you probably, you know, yeah. have a future star there amongst you. Now, for the event itself, it's taking place when? June 23rd, June 24th at 7 p.m., and June 25th at 3 p.m., now, for tickets, do people have to get them in advance? Can they get them at the door? What do they have to do? Tickets are available at the door, but we do suggest and recommend reservations, and they are available by calling 877-718-7894. That is toll-free for anyone um, that calls that number. And uh, if you get a machine, just leave your name, the date you want tickets for the performance that you want, and the number of tickets that you want, and someone will call you back. And the price of the tickets? They are $10 a piece. And we are going to be doing a giveaway here on the, uh, this promotion here, and we're going to be giving two tickets away to two of your lucky viewers. Well, thank you for that. So one lucky viewer out there, if you would like to go see the Velveteen Rabbit any of the days, any of the you, you will choose the day, whether it's the 23rd, the 24th, or the 25th. The Friday and Saturday shows are at 7 p.m. The Sunday is a matinee at 3 p.m. So what we're going to have you do now is call us at 570-459-9813, extension 104. Leave us your name and your telephone number on the machine, and we will put all the names in a hat usually in Kenny Kara's hat, and we will pick one winner <laughs> to see who will be going to the show. So please, uh, if you'd like to take part in this wonderful show and see the kids who are so talented, please go out and give them the support. You might win tickets, but otherwise, tell all your family and friends to call and get tickets, and don't miss the Velveteen Rabbit. It's not usually Ken Kara's hat, it's always Ken Kara's hat. Thank you, Lisa. So recently I had Old Forge style pizza at PNC Field and it changed my life. And I want to give you the same opportunity. We will be giving away a pair of vouchers each week for the Scranton Wilkes-Barre Rail Riders. The vouchers are good for one 2017 regular season home game. So watch SSP TV News for your chance to win. Well, there are so many reasons to download the new Samsung Productions app. And for one, you can watch SSP TV News at Knoebels or Disney World or on the Wildwood Boardwalk. Plus, you can use our app for special deals on golf packages. So download it today, please. I know life is hectic, but please hang out with us a little bit longer because up next we have another interesting outdoor segment with Standard Speaker reporter Kent Jackson. And in sports, we all know that Monica Shimko was fourth in the state in the 800 meter run, but did you know she finished ninth in her graduating class? We'll learn more about her in sports. This is SSP TV News, your place for 24 hours of your hometown news and information. This is SSP TV News, brought to you by Samsung Productions and the Hazleton Standard Speaker.
fishing without a license, but it's okay. It was May 28th, the Sunday of Memorial Day holiday weekend, and a one-day holiday from license buying. Pennsylvania's Fish and Boat Commission will hold another of those Fish for Free Days on July 4th. Because the free days coincide with holidays, relatives who visit from out of state can fish with their family members in Pennsylvania. People who never fished can try it at no cost. Former anglers who haven't fished in a few years or haven't managed to buy a license yet this year can on Fish for Free Days rekindle their interest and become customers, which is what the Fish and Boat Commission's hopes will happen. There's nothing like a day on the water to remind me how relaxing fishing can be when nothing nibbles the bait or how exciting it can be when the fish strike. Eric Levis of the Fish and Boat Commission said the Fish for Free Days began in 1984 the dates have changed over the years, but they've been on the Sunday of Memorial Day weekend and July 4th since 2005. During the Fish for Free Days, uh, Alan and Michelle Barnhart of McAdoo were fishing at Lake Irena in Hazel Township Community Park. They had their fishing licenses, like everyone else whom I met that day, and they'd been catching fish all year. Al told me a story about the proverbial one that got away. The trout was so big on his line that when it slapped the water, another angler thought a parachutist had slipped his harness. Al recounted this story to me shortly after a skydiver from above the Poconos had floated down to Hazleton Regional Airport in view of everyone around the lake. Uh, also around the lake was David Zayas and his nine-year-old son Angel. They were fishing next to the Barnharts. A saltwater fisherman who recently moved to Hazleton from the Bronx, New York, Zayas said he is learning to fish in freshwater. As he and Angel cast their bait onto the lake, his wife Angie walked around the lake with her infant Navaya. That's heaven spelled backwards. Children like Angel and Navaya don't need licenses to fish in Pennsylvania until they turn 16. Adults don't have to wait until the next free day to enjoy fishing either. Now that bass season has just started on Saturday, it's a good time to buy a license. They cost $22.90 and are good through December 31st. A trout and salmon stamp required when fishing in trout and salmon waters costs another $9.90. The commission offers licenses for one, three, or seven days for non-residents, multi-year licenses, and for senior citizens, lifetime licenses. During the last Fish for Free Day, I also fished at the Nescapec State Park. On Lake Francis there, I finally noticed one other angler fishing without a license after winging out to the lake's island. Then again, great blue herons fish for free every day. Time now for weather on SSPTV News. It was a pleasant day in downtown Hazleton, and Mother Nature has a few more of these days up her sleeve this week. Here's our local forecast from the National Weather Service. Tonight will be partly cloudy. We'll have a low of 59 degrees, and that will be for our night on Tuesday. On Wednesday, four-day outlook, we do have a 30% chance of showers and thunderstorms, mainly after 3 p.m., a high of 74 degrees. Wednesday night, partly cloudy, low of 57 degrees. Thursday looks mostly sunny with a high in the upper 70s. Thursday night, 30% chance of showers and thunderstorms, mostly cloudy skies, low of 64 degrees. Friday, 50% chance of showers and thunderstorms. It will be a mostly cloudy day with a high of 82. Friday night, we dip down to a 40% chance of showers and thunderstorms, mostly cloudy, low of 63. Saturday looks gray, partly sunny, high of 77. And then at night, mostly cloudy, we'll have a low of 58 degrees. Tonight's weather is brought to you by Valley High Food Drive-In, the area's oldest ice cream and fast food restaurant. We're open weekdays, 3.30 to 10 p.m. Stop by for our ice cream and yogurt, now featuring fat-free, no-sugar-added soft frozen yogurt with flavors like vanilla, strawberry, and strawberries and cream. We also have burgers, hot dogs, fries, and much more. That's Valley High, Route 93 in West Hazleton, and like us on Facebook. 
We're happy to be outside here in northeastern Pennsylvania. It's a beautiful, beautiful day. We're here at Edgewood by Sand Springs. We're back with Samantha. And, you know, we're talking, we're going to focus on grooms today because they don't have a, a lot of a say, I don't think, but they have some say, right? <laughs> Most grooms just tell me, tell me when to show up and I will be there. So normally, you know, they do not have too much to say, but any input that they have for the wedding day, we're happy to listen to. Well, it is their day too, in fairness. And uh, lots of the, of the grooms, they don't take a lot of time to get ready like the women do. So you have golf and uh, that's a big draw for the, for the group. Absolutely, so obviously we sit right here on our beautiful golf course. What's so awesome is that our grooms actually golf for free. Um, so we do have a special oh. rate also too for their groomsmen, which is $25 for greens and cart fee too. So something fun for the guys to do, you know, whether it be the week of the wedding or the morning of while the girls are getting ready, send them right on their way. They have a good time. All right. And also women, we didn't forget about you, the brides and the moms and all the people that are coming to the wedding. Look around at all of the good opportunities for pictures. I mean, you don't have to go off site. You can take all of your pictures right here. Absolutely. So what's really great about our scenic location is there's so many different spots that you can go on on the golf course for awesome pictures. We do um, always make sure to get enough golf carts ready for however many people are in the bridal party, including the photographers, the bride and groom. We kind of send you on your way. What's really nice too is we like to invite any photographers down who would like to the week of the wedding kind of come down and scope out some locations too. So we're more than happy to accommodate them that way, whether you go right in front of the pond or over to the bridge that we have here. Tons of great picture locations. Very good. Join us every week right here on SSP TV news. Thanks, Janine. And the construction process is complete for the new on-site ceremony location at Edgewood by Sand Springs in Drums. This beautiful new site is already being used and offers seating for up to 200 guests and breathtaking views of the mountains and the fourth hole of the golf course. Located adjacent to the cocktail patio, it will give couples and their guests the convenience of a ceremony, cocktail hour, and reception site, all within feet of one another. Beautiful sight, and let's hope some of these numbers are beautiful to you. It's your midday winning lottery numbers. Your wild number is 1. Pick 2 numbers, 0, 1. Pick 3, 9, 1, 0. Pick 4, 7, 5, 6, 3. And pick 5, 2, 3, 0, 3, 9. We talk with Monica Shimko. She finished 4th in the state in the 800-meter run. We'll do that after this break. Time now for sports on SSP TV News. I did not know that standout Tamaqua area athlete Monica Shimko played the flute. I asked her what was more difficult, running the hurdles or marching with the band. She answered, band. There's a lot I didn't know about Tamaqua's Renaissance woman, and I'm glad we all have the chance to learn more about her right now. There had to be a lot going through Monica Shimko's mind when pomp and circumstance was playing at her graduation in May. While she wasn't sitting in her usual seat playing along with her flute, I'm sure her bandmates were in her thoughts. In the band, like I'm friends with like the underclassmen and like I was section leader, so I was like I know some of the seventh graders and like it's fun to like talk to them and then like they look up to you and it's just it's awesome. She earned a pretty good seat at graduation this year by finishing ninth in her class, and she had a new accessory to show off to her friends. Shimko sported a PIAA state medal thanks to her fourth place finish in the 800 meter run. Ended my senior year with like straight A's on the last <laughs> quarter, so I was so happy and it was good. You're really finishing a high note. So you had all yeah. straight A's, I mean things are going good, and then you go to states and you finish the highest you've ever How did you feel after that race? Oh, I, I felt awesome. Like um, last year I was so happy just to even medal, like eighth place, I was so happy. And I went into the season just hoping to do better than last year and get my best times and break the school record that I've been like trying to break since freshman year and then everything worked out and it was it was awesome. At graduation, she may have even spent a few seconds thinking about the second she shaved off of that school record. I mean, we, we've had a school record here that's been around for 17 years in that event and uh, it was an all-time best record in the area for a long time and uh, Monica came in and for her to take it down was real special. Um, she got it at districts and then that record with, it was held by Liz Maness. She uh, beat it again by another second at States. Okay. So now I'm like, what, you look what you <laughs> left me with. I mean, that record, it was 17 years, is now two seconds faster. So I don't know what I'm going to do. And uh, 
So yeah, she's definitely special. Shimko was a key member of Tamaqua area's cross country and track and field teams. She'll continue her career in both sports at Army West Point. When I sit and I think about people you want to defend you and people you would trust yourself with, your lives with and things, definitely her. I could, I could stand by any decision she would make because I, I've dealt with it this long. I've been lucky enough to experience it. Shimko likes science and physics and may take up mechanical engineering in college. She'll once again have to balance school, sports, and success. What's the toughest challenge you think you faced when you were a high school athlete? Yeah, it was definitely like balancing academics and track yeah. because sometimes like after my meet I'd be so like excited if it, if it, went, it was like if it was a good meet or like something where I ran my best time I wouldn't want to like sit down and like I had to like make myself sit down and like do my homework and like study and that sometimes that was really hard but I got through it. She loves the challenge. It's part of the reason she chose Army West Point. Shimko doesn't know where she'll be in 20 years, but she has a pretty good feeling about what she'd like to be doing in 78 years. That's one thing I want to keep doing, like just keep running and like do 5Ks and marathons and hopefully when I'm older, I, like when I'm 90 years old, I want to be that, that one person doing the marathon. I'll be long gone by 2095. But I have a feeling there will be a different sports reporter at SSP TV News, and that reporter will be covering a very accomplished 90 year old marathon runner named Monica. All right, let's check out our standard speaker, SSP TV scoreboard, and good luck to Monica Shimko as she starts at Army West Point this summer. The Scranton Wilkesbury Rail Riders, they continue a winning streak as they beat Syracuse, and the Cubs, they beat the Padres 3 to 2 to move one game over 500. And that's sports, my friends. Good evening, everyone. Here's today's Talk to Town. Eckley Miners Village presents Patch Town Day's Irish Festival on June 24th and June 25th. There will be a St. Patrick's Day Parade in June on Saturday at 2 p.m. Also, there will be a vintage baseball game each day, along with Irish step dancing, music, food, and more. Admission will be $10 for adults, $9 for seniors, and $6 for children. And that's today's Talk of the Town. SSP TV News would like to send our sincere condolences to the family and friends of these recently departed. Martin S. Aiello, Hazleton. All services will be private. Arrangements are under the direction of the Joseph B. Conahan Funeral Home. Nikki Lee Bartolet, Freeland. The McHugh Wilczek Funeral Home is in charge of the arrangements. Louis N. Brogno, Hazleton. Mass will be Thursday at 11 a.m. at the Most Precious Blood Church in Hazleton. Friends may call Wednesday from 5 to 8 p.m. at the Fiero Funeral Home. Bertha M. Colavecchio, Summit Hill. Mass will be Wednesday at 12.30 p.m. from the St. Joseph Parish of Panther Valley. Friends may call Wednesday from 10.30 a.m. to 12.30 p.m. at the church. The Thomas J. Parambo Funeral Home is handling the arrangements. Dorothy B. Safco, Hazel Township. The Hazel Chapel of the Crofton Hughes Funeral Home will announce the arrangements. Joseph G. Saldukas Sr., Hazelton. Mass will be Wednesday at 10 a.m. in the Annunciation Parish at St. Gabriel's Church in Hazelton. Friends may call Wednesday from 9 to 10 a.m. in the church. The Fiero Funeral Home is handling the arrangements. Community players, they always put on a great show. Remember, you could win tickets to a performance tonight. All you have to do call us 459 9813 extension 104. Leave your name and phone number 570 area code. By the way, we'll be back tomorrow. Dave Seaman, standard speaker, sports editor, is going to be here. We're going to talk all about Penn State's throwback uniforms they'll be wearing for one game next season. I'll see you then. Take it easy, everyone. Watch us online anytime at ssptv.com and follow us on Facebook and Twitter.